Hi, I'm Michael White and I'm with Kurt Clore um, from Automatic Irrigation and I'm going to talk to you about how to program a Hunter i controller today. Well, Kurt, why don't you get started? The Hunter i controller is a modular controller. You can have anywhere from 6 to 42 stations with a traditionally, traditional wiring setup or with the dual two-wire module you can actually get up to 48 stations in this unit. It has pretty simple programming. It has a dial to select whatever you want to change. It has four arrows that you can use to select between various uh, choices within the L LED screen. And it has plus and minuses that you can use to change the values. It also has four different programs you can use, which you select by hitting this program button right here. The basic settings to set up a controller are all in this blue area here. Uh, so you can set your date and time, you can set program start time so it knows when to start watering. You can set program run time so it knows how long to water. And you can also select your days of the week. Pretty simple, they keep that all in one area so you can find it easily. Now when you get into more advanced stuff, here. Okay, let's talk about the rest of the dial that offers some more advanced uh, programming options. Uh, it's a little more detailed than the, than the Pro-C, if you will. So I think one of the first things there is the seasonal adjust. So the seasonal adjust um, can be used in a couple different ways. Um, let's say, for example, that uh, you're turning the system on for the first time in the spring and the, the rotor zones are set for 30 minutes and the spray zones maybe are set for 10 minutes and you want to water maybe not quite that much. You can set the seasonal adjust to 50% and, and cut that in half. And actually you can adjust it anywhere from 1% up to 300 percent. So as you get on into the season and it's getting a little drier, you can just change the seasonal adjust and that will adjust all the all the zones if you will. You can also do this by month. So maybe this controller is not going to get a lot of attention throughout the season. So you can go in there right now and say I want I want to set up um, April uh, to run at 50 or 60 percent of whatever's programmed. May maybe at 100 percent. How about June, July, and August maybe at 125 percent because you know those are hotter and typically drier months. So you could set that up in advance and uh, use the um, the water budget um, seasonal adjust to do that if you will. Um, once again, you can also connect this controller to the solar sink, uh, which will do some automatic adjustments for you. So let's talk about the uh, pump operation. You can turn the pump on and off by zone, if you will. So maybe you have 12 zones and the last two zones are drip. Maybe you just need the booster pump to run the first 10 zones, turn the pump off for the last two, and you don't need the extra pressure to run the drip zone. So you have the options of programming um, the pump by, by station. Uh, we also have the uh, cycle and soak. Uh, feature um, by station, if you will. So in this part of the country, we've got pretty pretty tight clay soils. Um, sometimes you don't want to water more than 15 or 20 minutes, or you've got water running down the driveway and across the curb and down the drain. So um, maybe you only want to run these zones for uh, 15 minutes at a time, uh, but to, but yet you know you need to water 30 minutes tonight. So you could set the cycle and soak by saying never run this zone or zone one more than 15 minutes at a time. So that's the cycle time. You can set the soak time at maybe 30 minutes. Um, and what will typically happen is, is this controller will go through all of its zones and it will try to come back at the end of the run of all the zones cycling through and pick up that zone. Typically that's more than 30 minutes, especially on these larger controllers. But if for some reason it's not, it would wait at least the soak time that you, that you programmed it. Okay? Um, so we could talk about the, um, the sensor operation. You can uh, pick here by zone what zones you want for the sensor to be operated. For example, maybe you have a, a zone um, that's an area that just doesn't get any rainfall or any watering, uh, or any rainfall, I guess I should say. Uh, you can say that zone do not follow the, the rain sensor or the solar sink. That zone will water no matter what because it's not getting enough water. And there's also an opportunity to put a flow sensor on here. Uh, so maybe the flow sensor, for some reason, uh, you don't want that on every zone. Maybe that's only certain zones. Maybe drip is too low a flow, and that's not a concern for you. You're worried about the other zones in the system, so you can um, set that by zone as well. Some other advanced features we've got here uh, is the station delay. You can change the delay between zones. So if, for example, sometimes you've got a low pressure system and um, these valves have trouble closing at low pressure, you want to make sure there's a little more time. So zone one definitely shuts off before zone two comes on. You can change that delay between stations.
You can also set a no water window because there's some opportunity here to set this up um, in flow zones and some different things like that, some more advanced features. But you know that you don't ever want to water between 6 in the morning and 6 in the evening. And you can tell the controller that and that's a, a no water window if you will. Um, you can also save and retrieve programs here. There's a way to save the programs and then uh, retrieve them. Sometimes uh, if the client gets in there and changes the program and, and you can't get there to correct it, you might be able to tell them over the phone how to retrieve uh, these programs. Um, and once again, you can view the programs and the total run times if you're curious about how long it's going to take for this program to run uh, as well in some of these advanced features. So, Kurt, how about some hidden features? There's also a few hidden features that aren't readily apparent from looking at the positions on the dial. If you turn to the off position and hold the plus button, it will actually change a, and set up a rain delay. So say you get a big rain event and you want to turn off watering for a week, you can do that. You can set it to not rain or not water for seven days or anywhere up to 180 days if you want. So you could even turn it off for the whole winter season if you needed to. Um, if you have the dial in the run position and you hold program button, it will pop up with a test program. At that point, you can use plus or minus to set station run times, and it will go through each station for, if you set it for two minutes, for instance, it will run each station for two minutes, so you can walk around the field and check to make sure everything's working right. Um, you can actually advance through the stations at that point, too. If you have one you set for two minutes, but you're, you're, uh, you're, you're sure that it's working okay after one minute, you can hit the front arrow button and go ahead and advance to the next station. Finally, if you use have the dial in the run position, you hold the plus and minus, and the left and right buttons all at the same time, it will go into quick check mode. And the quick check sends a signal out to each station briefly and checks the electrical connection there. And if it comes back with a problem, it will tell you and you'll have an idea uh, where you might have a short or something of that sort out in the field. Okay, let's talk about um, some uh, system, system status LEDs in the top left-hand corner of the controller. If, if you don't have a sensor hooked up or any station wiring or any flow monitors hooked up, there will be no light whatsoever. Once you hook up a sensor or hook up a wire to a station or a flow meter, those lights will become green. Well, hopefully they'll be green unless there's an error of some sort and then they will turn red if in fact you've got a short, whether it be a short to a valve, the flow sensor is not wired properly, maybe it's giving an error message. But it gives you a quick view of everything's in working condition from the rain sensor, flow sensor, uh, or a station solenoid wire. Well, that covers the basics of how to program in an I-Core. There's a lot more detail involved, and if you need, have any questions and need any more information, please give us a call at Automatic Irrigation. Thank you.